FreeCAD is totally free software that can be used for creating 3D models, technical drawings, and manufacturing files, like STL files for 3D printing, and or G-code for use with automated manufacturing equipment, like CNC machines. Technically described as a general-purpose parametric 3D computer-aided design modeler, the program is an alternative to expensive programs like SolidWorks and others. Now to get started, you have to download and install FreeCAD on your computer. To do this, go to FreeCAD.org. Once you're on the FreeCAD homepage, click here to get to the download page. And once you're on the download page, click to download the version for your computer, Windows, Mac, or Linux. In our case, we're running Windows on a 64-bit PC, so we would click here to download the program. Once downloaded, find the file on your computer and run it to install FreeCAD. We already have it downloaded and installed on our computer, so we can skip this step. Once installed, launch the program, and you should end up with the opening FreeCAD screen. We're running version 21.1, so here's what our opening screen looks like. Next, click here to see a list of the FreeCAD workbenches. Each workbench has a selection of tools specific to the purpose of that particular workbench. We don't have time in this quick start tutorial to demonstrate each workbench, but to give you an idea, we're going to do a quick demo of the popular part design workbench right here. The part design workbench is used to create various 3D designs. To get started, let's click on File, New. Then let's click on this icon right here, Create Body. And then this icon right here, Create Sketch. And let's tell FreeCAD we want to work on the XY plane. Click here and click OK. Now FreeCAD has presented you with a collection of tools to use when you're creating your sketch. Some of them include the View Tools, the Drawing Tools, and the Constraint Tools, which are used to dimension your sketch. And for a quick example, we can create a rectangle by clicking right here and drawing our arbitrary rectangle right here. And we can define the dimensions of this rectangle. First, we right click. Then let's click on this side right here and click on this icon here, Constrain Horizontal Distance, and let's set that to 40 millimeters. And now let's click on this side and click on this icon right here, Constrain Vertical Distance, and make that 40 millimeters. And to center the rectangle, we click on this point right here, Notice it turns green, and then this point right here, and then the center of the XY axis right here. Notice now that all three points are green. Next, we want to click on this icon right here, Constrain Symmetrical. And now our rectangle is symmetrical around the intersection of the XY plane. Next, let's click right here to create a circle. We'll draw that circle at an arbitrary position here and click when we're done, then right click. Now to position this circle, we click on the center and we click on the intersection of the XY plane. Notice we have two green dots now or two green points. And now we want to click on this icon right here, Constrain Coincident and that moves the circle to the center or to the intersection of the XY plane. Next, click on the circle, and we're going to constrain the radius. In other words, we're going to define the dimension of the radius of the circle. To do that, click right here, 
and click Constrain Radius. And let's make the radius of that circle 5 millimeters. Enter 5 and click OK. And now we can position this dimension to a location of our choice. Let's move it right down here. So now we've created a rectangle 40 by 40 millimeters centered on the intersection of the XY plane and we've created a circle with a radius of 5 millimeters centered on the XY plane. So next let's close this by clicking right here. Then we click here on this tab in the combo view. Go to the model view and click on sketch and then we want to click on this icon right here, Pad, which will change our sketch to a three-dimensional model. And if we wanted to, we could change the dimension on that model. This is currently 10 millimeters. We could, for instance, make it 3 millimeters. Put in 3 and tab out. Or we could change it back to 10 and tab out. And to change our view, we can click on these icons here or go back to our isometric or perspective view. And we could hold down the right mouse button and the shift key and move the model around to view it from any angle. Let's go back to our perspective view. Next, let's click OK. And that is a quick demo of how to create a sketch and then turn it into a 3D model using the part design workbench and the sketch workbench. And of course, FreeCAD has other workbenches as shown earlier, including the part workbench. The part workbench lets you, among other things, work with primitive shapes like cylinders, cubes, and others to create your design. We could, for instance, add a sphere to our model by clicking here. You'll notice the sphere appears over here in our combo view. And if you hover, you can see that it's located inside the model that we drew previously. To fix that, we click on Sphere, come down here to Placement, come down to Position, and let's change its position on the Z-axis to raise it up 10 millimeters. Do that. Tab out, and now let's add a cylinder by clicking here. And if we hover, we can see that it is located inside our current model. To fix that, we can come down once again to Placement and click on Position. And let's once again change the Z position of the cylinder to 10 millimeters and tab out. And so there you have a quick demo of how to use the part workbench. The sheet metal workbench offers tools for creating sheet metal designs like this. Then there's the spreadsheet workbench, which is used to create parametric models by giving each dimension a name and a size, allowing you to define other dimensions as functions of some basic dimension. Like in this example, where rectangle height is defined as 0.25 times the rectangle width. Then there's the draft workbench, which allows you to create 2D drawings. And the architectural workbench is used for creating architectural drawings of houses, buildings, or whatever. Then there's the tech draw workbench, which turns your models into engineering drawings that can be printed out and shared. That concludes this brief overview of FreeCAD. Be sure to check out our other FreeCAD tutorials on this channel to get more details. These tutorials include such things as how to make a bolt, how to make a nut, how to use the sheet metal workbench, how to create engineering drawings using the TechDraw workbench, and how to create 3D parametric models, and more. You can click the links in the description below to watch these tutorials and more on our channel, 321 Step-by-Step -step Tutorials, here on YouTube. 
Be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel, and thanks for watching.